the world is watching Donald Trump and MAGA Republicans and democracies across the world are absolutely terrified. This is former Prime Minister of Australia, Malcolm Turnbull, and here's what he had to say in a recent panel where he was speaking on a TV show. What if Donald Trump allows you, forces Ukraine to surrender to Putin? What if Donald Trump uh, pulls out of NATO? And, and you well, think well, there's a what, live option, like oh, well, possibility? Said, well, I mean, I, I think it's, it's he, Donald Trump has threatened to pull out of NATO. Donald Trump stood up in front of an audience and said that he said to an unnamed European leader, if you don't spend more money on defence, I'm going to encourage, you know, Putin to have a go at you. That's more or less what he said. I mean, this, this, look... Trump rattled every single cage, every single alliance. He was he he is attracted to dictators and tyrants like Kim Jong Un, like Xi Jinping, like Putin, and he threatened to undermine or pull out of his most of America's longest standing alliances. And Turnbull was the Prime Minister of Australia from 2015 to 2018. Let me show you President of France Emmanuel Macron. Here's what he just had to say. And again, democracies across the world, leaders of countries with traditions in democracy are trying to figure out how can we deal with the issues in the world without a reliable ally, given Donald Trump and MAGA and what they've done and what they're doing with trying to block funding to Ukraine? The world is terrified. Here is President Macron. Play the clip. Si l'Europe et je dirais a fortiori chacun de nos États membres, dont la France. Nous sommes souverains. Bah, notre avenir, et si on considère que cette guerre détermine notre avenir, ce que je crois profondément, parce que se joue là notre sécurité comme Européens, est-ce que nous devons déléguer notre avenir à l'électeur américain Ma réponse est non, quel que soit son vote. Donc on n'a pas à attendre le résultat. C'était le but de cette réunion d'aujourd'hui, c'est pour ça que je l'ai voulu maintenant. N'attendons pas de savoir quelle est l'issue de ce résultat. Décidons maintenant, parce que le constat est clair. C'est notre avenir, c'est l'Europe qui est en jeu. C'est aux Européens de décider. C'est formidable si on en a d'autres qui nous joignent, mais ça doit être en plus. Nous devons avoir la possibilité de faire sans. Pas par défiance, pas par pessimisme, pas parce qu'on aurait peur, juste parce que c'est ce qui dépend de nous. C'est ce qu'on doit faire. And again, they see these world leaders, whether it's Australia, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in Germany, whether it's other EU nations, whether it's France. I mean, you go around to democracies across the world and they're horrified about this MAGA movement in the United States. Not a both sides thing, but the MAGA movement. And look, they're referencing the speech that like Trump just gave. You know, while our media is like ignoring it and they want to put on the front page if President Biden slightly stutters or uses a note card in a speech, despite President Biden saying very, very kind of detailed pro-America, um, you know, tactical foreign policy initiatives, when you got Donald Trump just saying, I'm a great rambler, I'm a great lambler and, and, and rambler and attacking NATO, that our media doesn't want to cover it here. But like, remember, like Donald Trump's giving a speech like this here, play the clip. They asked me that question. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. And that's what they're referencing. Let me show you another uh, video right here of that uh, panel that uh, former Australia Prime Minister Turnbull uh, was on. Here's what he has to say as well. We have to get used to the fact that the United States may not be the have be aligned on the same values in quite the same way as it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. And that's, Just... that's a reality we've got to live with. And let me show you one more clip right here that's gone viral on TikTok. When you see Trump with Putin, as I have on a few occasions, he's like the 12-year-old 
boy that goes to high school and meets the captain of the football team. <laughs> oh, my hero. It is really creepy. It's really creepy. Now, and I don't, that struck you at the time? Oh, absolutely. It struck everybody. It was, it was like it, you could touch it. It was creepy. The creepiness was palpable. Are you trying to say they're having now, a bromance? No, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying... I'm just telling you what I saw. Regrettably, the Republican Party under Donald Trump and particularly the right wing of the Republican Party are very sympathetic to Vladimir Putin. I mean, I've been with Trump and Putin. Uh, Trump is in awe of Putin. Tyrants are often popular. You see, the key to democracy, liberal democracy, is that it empowers the majority but it also, through the rule of law, constrains the majority. And if you get to the point where anybody who can muster a majority, and I don't think Trump can do that, by the way, but anyone who can muster a majority is given absolute power and then can do whatever they like to the minority, that's not a democracy. That is a tyranny. That, that, is, that is an autocracy even if it's got the support of 50 51% of the population, that is not what makes a democracy. A democracy, as we understand it, is one where the rule of law protects all citizens and the rule of law applies to all citizens, whether they're the president or the prime minister or an ordinary, uh, uh, you know, elector. Are you self-conscious about your smile due to stains? Are your teeth aging you? Popular food and drinks are known to stain teeth. Beverages like coffee, tea, and wine stain them over time. So what can you do to brighten your smile? Well, you should give Smile Actives a try. Smile Actives is safe, effective, easy to use, and will keep you smiling proudly. As you probably already know, I'm a big tea drinker like many people. You may be a coffee drinker, and over time, I notice my teeth lose some of their brightness that I was used to seeing. 97% of Smile Actives users in a clinical trial reported up to six shades wider on average, all within 30 days. Simply add Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel to your regular toothpaste. It's been formulated with polyclean technology to boost stain removal and deliver active whitening ingredients into the teeth's grooves and crannies to get better whitening. Smile Actives makes teeth whitening gel that can simply be added to your toothpaste every time you brush your teeth. So no change in your routine, no extra time, and no more messy strips, trays, or lights. People will start commenting on your whiter, brighter smile in just days. Smile Actives is the whitening boost your favorite toothpaste needs to give you the smile you deserve. Here's what you gotta do. Visit smileactives.com slash Midas today to receive a special buy one, get one free offer with auto delivery plus free shipping and handling. That's smileactives.com slash Midas, S-M-I-L-E-A-C-T-I-V-E-S dot com slash Midas, M-E-I-D-A-S. Terms and conditions apply. See site for details. And again, you have Donald Trump making videos of himself, like actually sitting there in Mar-a-Lago or whatever, posting videos on his social media platform, talking about getting rid of NATO, and then posting these videos on his social media platform. So yes, these world leaders are taking it very seriously that Donald Trump wants to support Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un and President Xi. Here's a video that Donald Trump recently recorded of himself and posted on his social media platform. The State Department, the defense bureaucracy, the intelligence services, and all of the rest need to be completely overhauled and reconstituted to fire the deep staters and put America first. We have to put America first. Finally, we have to finish the process we began under my administration of fundamentally reevaluating NATO's purpose and NATO's mission. Our foreign policy establishment keeps trying to pull the world into conflict with a nuclear-armed Russia based on the lie that Russia represents our greatest threat. But the greatest threat to Western civilization today is not Russia. It's probably, more than anything else, ourselves and some of the horrible USA hating people that represent us. 
And by the way, what these world leaders are also looking at is what Donald Trump's advisors are saying. This is Donald Trump's former national security advisor, John Bolton, saying, take Donald Trump seriously. He will destroy NATO. This is Trump's national security advisor. Play this clip. It's great to have you. I just wonder, kind of bluntly, if Donald Trump is reelected, do you think that means the end of NATO as we know it now? Yeah, uh, yes, I do. I think he will withdraw. I, I think uh, you have to take uh, what he's saying is coming directly from, uh, from, from what he has long been saying privately and, and in some cases publicly. It, it's a little disturbing now to hear some Republicans saying, well, you know, he's, he's just bargaining with NATO or this is just the way he talks. Uh, that, that's not right. He, he has used this failure of uh, many members, a majority of NATO members, to spend 2% of their GDP on defense, as they all voluntarily committed to do in 2014, uh, not to strengthen NATO, but to help destroy it. It is true that after his criticisms, uh, more was spent by European members of, of NATO on defense, but that wasn't going to change his mind because there were a lot of other criticisms he had as well. So, uh, you know, it is, uh, I, I, was, I was there with him in the spring of 2018 at the uh, NATO summit in Brussels where he damn near did get out of NATO. He is serious about it. And whether you're a Trump supporter or a Trump opponent, uh, don't, don't think he's kidding about this one. Now, this is Donald Trump's former defense secretary, Mark Esper. Here's what he has to say. Donald Trump's a threat to democracy. Trump's own defense secretary. Three years after uh, the attack on the Capitol, I'm just curious, Mr. Secretary, do you view uh, Donald Trump as a threat to American democracy? Well, first of all, good to be with you, Jim. Um, it is a tragic day in our, our nation's history. And, and yes, I, I do regard him as a, a threat to democracy. Democracy as we know it, our institutions, uh, our, our political culture, all those things that make America great um, and have defined us as, you know, the, the oldest democracy on this planet. Remember when Donald Trump was disgracing the office and he would send like Ivanka to the G20 summit and the world leaders would be like, why are you here? You, you remember that when she's trying to like butt in on the conversation? They're like, get, get away, Ivanka. What are you doing? Yes, but this is not social justice. It's all, yeah. 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 As soon as you talk on that economic aspect of it, though, yeah. a lot of people start listening who yeah. wouldn't otherwise listening. listen. And the same with the defense side of it yeah. um, in terms of the whole sort of business. Or you remember when Donald Trump gave a speech to the UN and everybody laughed at him when he said that he's accomplished more than any U.S. president in history? Play the clip. Today I stand before the United Nations General Assembly to share the extraordinary progress we've made. In less than two years, my administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. America's so true. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. And on the other hand, you've got President Biden articulating foundational principles of American foreign policy. Let me just show you a few clips here of Biden. This is Biden on the Late Late Show with Seth Meyer. Here, play this clip. You gotta take a look at the other guy. He's about as old as I am, but he can't even remember his wife's name. Yeah. And, uh, number one. Number two, <laughs> it's about how old your ideas are. Look, I mean, this is a guy who wants to take us back. He wants to take us back on Roe v. Wade. He wants to take us back on a whole range of issues that are 50, 60 years, they've been solid American positions. And here's President Biden bringing together the leaders in the Senate, bringing together the leaders in the House of Representatives and telling them, look, we need to figure out a funding strategy, specifically looking at MAGA Mike Johnson, who's Donald Trump's coffee boy and taking orders from Trump and saying, we need to deal with issues like this now. Here, play this clip of President Biden. Work to do, we gotta figure out how we're gonna keep uh, funding the government, which is an important problem, an important solution we need to find, and I think we can do that. And, uh, and Ukraine, I think the need is urgent. I hope we can speak to that a little bit. 
And uh, I think the consequences of inaction every day in Ukraine are dire. I've been speaking to some of our our G7 partners, and you just got back, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're very concerned. And, uh, and also, we need to uh, we we need to, in terms of supplemental, we need to deal with the Israeli portion. But that also contains a significant portion having to do with humanitarian assistance into the Palestinian area. Which I think is important. And uh, we have to replenish the air defenses for Israel, and we have to work on making sure they don't face the threat from, uh, they can face the threat from, the, uh, from what's going on in the Middle East, not just from uh, Hamas, but from Iran. One more clip of President Biden right here. And government funding, uh, I'm sure you guys had all of that all taken care of, but uh, all can decide, I think that uh, it's a Congress's responsibility to fund the government. We've got to get about doing a shutdown would damage the economy significantly. And I think we all agree to that. And we need a bipartisan solution. So uh, I want to hear from the group and uh, I want to hear from all of you here. So thank you all for coming. That's what we're going to be talking about. Thank Mr. You. But then, of course, you've got Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's reflective of the MAGAs. And this is what the Republican Party is. So, yeah, you've got former Australian Prime Minister Turnbull. You've got Macron. You've got the leaders in the EU nation. You, you, you've got the leader of UK. You've got leaders across the world looking at this and saying, yeah, this is if th this is what the Republican Party has become. Here, play this clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene. Sounds About like 2016 and 2017, the whole Russian collusion lies that they came up with in the, be in the beginning. How big of a threat do you see Russian aggression going forward? I think if you walked around and asked most people if they are afraid of Russia, they would, they would laugh and tell you no. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's actually terrifying. This is, this is, as an American, it is mortifying that that is how democracies see us as here and, and, and view us. We're supposed to be the beacon of democracy here. We're supposed to be a leader. And they're looking at this, man, well, I know how big our international audience is. I know a lot of people watch this outside of the United States as well. And you're like, how could this be happening here in the United States? Well, look, I think a lot of the American people get it, but there is this MAGA thing here that is you know, anti-democracy, pro-Putin. And, you know, we got to call it, we, we got to call it out, but the world gets what's going on. Democracies abroad get what's going on. Anyway, I thought that was some compelling footage right there. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million together. Thanks for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.